Hello and welcome to the Ditton Works YouTube channel. I have always been a fan of small loudspeakers. And what we're going to talk about today is a very small pair of loudspeakers that you can actually buy but build yourself. They're from KJF Audio, they're full range, and we're going to have a chat about them now. KJF Audio is a company which specialise in kit loudspeakers. They do full range kits, they do multi-way kits, they also have a range of amplifiers. Now, how these particular speakers came to my attention is these little baby ones are in their range called the SL series. Now, as everybody will know, I'm a bit of a Celestian geek, so sometimes when I'm looking on the internet something about SL series, whether there's some for sale or if somebody's struggling with a repair, I'll look up SL series. And sure enough, <laughs> searched SL series and these came up. And I thought, they're not Celestian SL series. Let's have a look at these. And even more interestingly than that, KJF Audio. KJF is actually my initials. And I thought, this is too good to be true. Let's just have a look at this website. Went into the website and I was absolutely, I spent ages on there scrolling through all the different kits because kit speakers have been something I've been interested in for years. That There's something quite satisfying about buying a flat pack speaker kit, gluing all the cabinets together, putting the drive units in because realistically most of the hard work is already done. Things like routering out where the base drivers sit and the drive units sit, getting the edges nice and neat. The only thing you would have to do yourself, which I don't actually find a disadvantage because you've got a lot of choice here, they don't come veneered. So this demonstration set were veneered by the owner's brother, I believe. And they look a knockout, they really do, they look stunning. But you would get your kit as a flat pack sort of bare MDF kit. Now the advantage to that is you could choose your own veneer or you could paint them any way you wanted to to match whichever environment you were putting them in. And I think that's a bonus because I have struggled in the past that for argument's sake, you bought a pair of loudspeakers that are in cherry and then you try and buy a stand that's in cherry and that's a different shade of cherry or a completely different color. The same thing happens if for argument's sake, you're buying outside of the, the, the family of loudspeakers, if you like. So when I had my full 5.1 setup of the Celestian A series in Cherry, they were all Cherry. But when I bought a pair of Kef RDM ones in Cherry, it was a different Cherry. Anyway, this way, you would be able to get them pretty well matched to any piece of furniture you wanted to match them to, as long as that hasn't been sun bleached or so on and so forth. So let's have a chat about these specific ones. So this range, the SL series, come with the Mark Audio full range drive units. Now, when I first picked these up, I thought that's a very small drive unit. I wasn't expecting a lot out of these. And realistically, these are designed for desktop or near field monitoring but I have tried them in this room, and as we'll show in the video in a minute, they are actually really rather quite impressive. A little bit about full range units. So there's pluses and minuses here that if you haven't got a complicated crossover network and you've just got one drive unit trying to deal with the whole frequency range, it's a much more simplistic system. So in effect, you've simplified the the design so it should be nice and clean and clear and probably pleasant to listen to. A lot of work would have to go into the drive units though. As where when you have a multi ray system there's a complicated crossover network in there, somebody really needs to have done their homework to make sure all of the filtering is all done smoothly and sounds nice. So there is some advantage to a full range unit. Me personally my experience over the years with full range units, I've never been that happy with them. I'm not a fan of louder loudspeakers for argument's sake. I find them a little bit shouty. I think they do need a tweeter. And that is something I have experimented with. I did try these with the Townsend Super Tweeters and it made a world of difference. The only thing I would say is that would drastically increase the price of what is effectively quite a cheap loudspeaker kit. These aren't expensive to buy. I was well impressed with the pricing on there that you're able to get something that's really quite good quality, very well thought out, 
and is customizable to your tastes, really good value for money. Right, let's move my LS35As, spin the stands round, and we'll put them on and we'll have a listen. Okay, so what we need to bear in mind is these really are quite small. If we compare them even to LS35As, they're very, very small loudspeakers. So they're not gonna fill a room with enormous sound. They're not gonna be able to increase the sound pressure level in a space dramatically. They are designed for near field monitoring or near field listening, but I thought it'd be worthwhile trying to record what they do sound like firing down the length of my room to give you guys some impression of actually how, how good these little things really are. Let's have a listen. Okay, I'm not sure how that's gonna come over in the sound clip. I have tried to uh, simulate a near field position where the microphone is very close to the speakers and then the full room sound. In this room, they are a little bit lost. I would potentially need the slightly larger ones or move into the pencil series that KJF Audio do as well, which are much larger. Still full range, but larger. I then have tried these in a desktop situation, so using laptop or iPad and then running a small amp through to these in a near field position and they're really good. They're far better than the sort of plastic, um, I think mine were Altac Lansing, the ones I had, which was an active sub with plastic satellite loudspeakers. These are far better than that by a long, long way. If I felt I needed a little bit more impact, then adding an active subwoofer would obviously be beneficial. But in the environment I had them in, I didn't need that. It was very near field. They sounded like wearing a really good, spacious, open pair of headphones. It was really enjoyable. I've got to say that if we look at the specification of that Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Audio Drive unit, I think it's a little bit optimistic what points that can reach because the extra extended HF levels aren't there and the extra LF levels obviously due to physics aren't there either. It's not like they are thin or very light on bass, it's just they haven't got that impact in, in a bigger room. But not many speakers would have, to be honest with you. So using them in their dedicated environment, near field, it doesn't matter that you haven't got those extra lows or the really high highs because they sound pleasant. They are unfatiguing, they don't have any of that shoutiness normally attributed to, in my experience, full range loudspeakers. So, what a bonus. Competitively priced, very nice kit, very easy to assemble. You get all the parts you need. You just need to buy glue and so on and so forth, all the little extra bits. You could then veneer them or paint them whichever way you chose to, and you would have a very inexpensive, high quality desktop setup pair of speakers that, in my opinion, actually do work in a hi-fi setup be ideal if you were had very, very small listening room or wanted a second listening room or in a bedroom. Fantastic. Take care, guys. I'll catch up with you soon.